Anthony from Georgia for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayorkas, we do not have a country without a secure border. And we cannot have a safe country. We cannot protect our own democracy without protecting our elections. That is a fact. The open border is the number one issue across America in poll after poll. And that is exactly why this committee impeached you. Mr. Secretary, the Oversight Project released a bombshell report last night on your connection to the dark money NGO industrial complex of illegal immigration. I know you saw this from one of my colleagues just earlier. They found flyers throughout the Resource Center Matamoros refugee camp in Mexico telling illegal aliens, reminder to vote for President Biden when you are in the United States. We need another four years of his term to stay open. Eyewitnesses saw the flyers also being handed out to migrants who were using RCM for assistance in coming to the United States. In an audio recording, the founder of RCM, Gabby Zavala, by the way, we maybe should subpoena her to, to the committee, agreed that they need to help as many people as possible before President Trump gets reelected. RCM is an operation that houses functions for the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, which helps migrants enter the United States, and you're familiar with their work. We know that you served as a former board member, excuse me, former board member of this group that funds illegal immigration. And they're very proud of you, Mr. Secretary. They congratulated you on your nomination. You worked as a board member of an NGO that is working in conjunction with other NGOs, which are not only financing the invasion of the country, but also telling illegal aliens to vote in the United States elections. They are telling illegal aliens, non-citizens, to come vote for Joe Biden. That's your boss. This is corruption at the deepest level. As a matter of fact, I would call it treason. It's treason because these people have declared war on our citizens by raping our women, our children, and murdering people. Like Lakin Riley, you're familiar with her, right? Congressman, our heart breaks. Are you familiar with Lakin Riley? Uh, uh, I am uh, familiar with the case. You should have deported her so that she could be alive today. Her parents would have appreciated that. And also Kayla Hamilton, who was brutally raped and murdered by a cartel member. Her mother came and spoke to us. She didn't deport him either. You let him in the country. You, Mr. Secretary, have allowed over 10 million illegals, probably higher than that, could be closer to 15 million, we don't know, to invade our country. You've allowed the cartels to make billions and billions. As a matter of fact, you're probably the best business partner they could ever have. They make all this money in human trafficking and drug trafficking at our border. You've allowed approximately 300 Americans to be murdered every single day from fentanyl that comes across our border. And now you're aiding NGOs to steal our elections through your budget. I demand proof of citizenships in our elections, and that is something every single member of Congress should care about. We don't need illegal aliens voting in our elections. We're supposed to be here talking about your budget, but we're talking about how money is being used to make sure people come into our country are able to get a social security number in which they can register to vote. And on that note, Mr. Mayorkas, I demand that Chuck Schumer holds your impeachment trial in the Senate because that's exactly what we should be focused on right now. Mr. Chairman, I yield the remainder of my time. The gentlelady yields. I now recognize Mr. Garcia, the gentleman from California, for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. I'm sorry you had to listen to a lot of misinformation right now and throughout uh, this hearing. Um, and I also, just for the, for the record, you are here. You're doing a very difficult job. Even though some folks are trying to uh, remove you from office, we know that's not going to happen. The impeachment sham against you is dead on arrival in the Senate. And so I look forward to you continuing to do a very difficult job uh, for the country and for the administration. Now, I want to just note, since you last testified, we know that um, Donald Trump has also become the presumptive nominee of his party. Uh, immigrants like you and me remember and understand and know his dangerous rhetoric and the way he 
talks about immigrants like us, but I want to go back to his 2016 words. I think it's important to put those back into the record. Quote, when Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're, sen they're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. Now, it's interesting because you and I both know that non-citizens are 60% less likely to actually commit crimes than citizens. And so he's just using this xenophobic rhetoric to demonize migrants that are trying, in many cases, searching for a better life and running away from extreme violent positions in their home countries. And this rhetoric we know has continued. Trump calls immigrants who enter the country oftentimes animals. He just did this so recently. And he said, and I quote, this is a quote, Democrats say, please don't call them animals, they're humans, Trump said. Quote, I said, no, they're not humans, they're animals. This is dehumanizing rhetoric, and it's wrong and unacceptable. Now, Mr. Secretary, does this type of rhetoric fuel violence here in the United States? Um, Congressman, I'm going to um, refrain from opining on the words of a particular candidate, given uh, the Hatch Act restrictions. No, I appreciate that. But what I will say, though, is that his rhetoric is wrong and disturbing, and his policies are actually worse. And we know that President Trump has said he would immediately launch the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. I want to now note and talk a little bit about something that Donald Trump has also tried to characterize as we talk about migrants. He and his, one of his uh, main lieutenants, Stephen Miller, has promised large-scale raids and actually has suggested using National Guard troops, even sending National Guard troops from Republican-led states into, into neighboring states led by Democrats. And what we're seeing now in Texas there's real risk there. Certainly if we see National Guards being used this way in the future. Can you, you your opinion about the National Guards being used in Texas? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the precise Based question? on what we're seeing now in Texas, do you think there's risk, additional risk, that we could see National Guard being used in a way that could be dangerous at the border? Uh, Congressman, um, the deployment of National Guard uh, can be an effective force multiplier when it is coordinated with uh, federal authorities, specifically the United States Border Patrol. When it is not, it um, presents a risk to our efforts to secure the border. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And I think we just, we just saw that recently play out in a, very, in a very dangerous and disturbing way. Now, I want to also note something about the way uh, the incumbent president views migration and the way he views the world. And I think it's important to, to, to point out we know that in 2016, Donald Trump launched his campaign by pointing out that Mexicans are essentially rapists and murderers. We've seen that already. In 2018, he told members of Congress in the Oval Office when they discussed protecting immigrants from African countries that they didn't want any migrants from what he called shithole countries. And that's his quote, not mine. Trump then suggested that the U.S. should instead bring more people from countries such as Norway, because apparently they're nice immigrants. And let's never, not forget that he tried over and over again to ban Muslims coming from this country as well. All the while, he continues to fool extremism and violence by claiming falsely that he won the 2020 election. Now, Trump continues with his view of the world to attack a legal immigration system that actually works. We know that visas fell every year during Trump's administration. There was a hiring freeze at the U.S. Citizenship and Custom Immigration Service. And his administration has used every possible way of disqualifying and denying visas. Mr. Secretary, can you tell us how policies like denying visas actually undermine our situation at the border? Um, now, as a gentlelady from Texas, Ms. Sheila Jackson Lee, for five minutes of testimony. Our questions. <clears throat> Secretary, I appreciate your presence here today, uh, as I do um, millions of Americans and the <clears throat> members of this uh, committee who are here seriously to do the work of the American people. Uh, let me, first of all, uh, speak the obvious, since my colleagues uh, want to attribute more money, more money to Democrats. I'm very proud of my legislation, H.R. 3208, uh, which has passed this committee, cyber workforce legislation that has been drafted, which the committee favorably reported uh, in uh, July, it appears, and would also um, address the question that Mr. Gavarino was speaking about. He has departed um, about uh, your workforce issue. If we would pass 
a number of legislative initiatives, we might move you along further. And this bill in particular talks about cyber workforce, which is one of my very serious issues. Let's train them. Um, uh, let's uh, give them uh, internships or access, uh, and let's put them to work. And I think if we did that, you would have at least a portion of the battle uh, where you would have a staff that could begin working at Homeland Security. It is a place that I have heard people are interested in working uh, primarily uh, to defend their nation. So let's see if we can do something constructive in this uh, committee. But, but I do want to um, address uh, the question of dealing with the articles of impeachment, uh, willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. Uh, it's always uh, difficult to ask someone to detail their own uh, failings, frailties. Uh, do you believe, uh, Mr. Secretary, that you have failed to comply with the law? And where would you, where would you uh, do better in complying with the law on behalf of the American people? Congresswoman, uh, I've been in public service, I think, about 22 years. I've taken the oath, I think, five times, maybe six. I've adhered to the oath um, uh, to which I have um, sworn and um, I have abided by the law each and every step of the way. When your question is asked over and over again, and this is for the American people, if you're still tuning in about whether the southern border is secure, they need that answer. And so I would ask the question, as someone who uh, believes that you do the best with what you have and you work hard, um, and that we owe the American people the duty of a secure border, what more would you do um, if that was the question and the answer was that we need to do more? What more would you do to secure the American border if you felt that was necessary um, and uh, that you wanted to tell the American people this is what I needed to have? Congresswoman, we are dealing with a fundamentally broken immigration system. That is our fundamental problem. Um, and I would uh, encourage Congress to pass a bipartisan Senate legislation uh, that would bring tremendously advancing reform to the broken immigration system, and it would also resource our department to execute those reforms advantageously. It seems a simple uh, proposition to me, and throughout the entire questioning that I've decided to sit and listen, I've heard no offering of a resolution by my friends on the other side of the aisle. There is absolutely nothing to answer the second article of impeachment, breach of public trust, uh, and that is uh, that uh, we know that uh, Congress has the sole power of impeachment um, and that you shall be removed for the breach of uh, trust, then what is that breach? What is your belief is a breach of trust? Uh, Congresswoman, I'm not aware of any, and let me assure you uh, that I do not spend time on the impeachment proceedings. I focus my attention exclusively on the work of the Department of Homeland Security. We do know that, and that is an answer that I wish some of our colleagues who decide to not be here for that to be able to listen. We do know that Iran, for example, is a major proponent of terrorism, um, and they decided to exercise that definition by bombarding Israel with 300 um, of the um, missiles uh, that they um, decide to use, the drones that they decide to use against uh, an ally uh, for this horrible attack. What then would you give as an answer? Did, did we, the United States, generate an attack on uh, Israel? Was that our doing? Uh, no, it was not, uh, Congressman. And are we prepared to be supportive uh, in, in helping to defend our homeland? We most certainly are, Congressman. We do that every single day through the extraordinary work of 268,000 men and women in our department. And you haven't seen anybody stand up and, and resign and say, I'm frightened, I don't want to do this work, I don't want to protect the homeland. Have you seen that occur today? I, I have not, and people risk their lives every single day on behalf of our country, the, both in the department, in other departments, and of course um, in, our, 
in our branches of the military. Well, let me the gentlelady's the time has expired, and, and I now I reckon no, the gentlelady's no time has expired, and we're having to impeached. insist on the five minutes I know because he would of the want time remaining. That, Mr. Chairman. I see gentlelady no is not recognized. For the gentleman I, to be impeached. Gentlelady is not recognized. I, no I now recognize Mr. Ezell, the gentleman from Mississippi. I thank the chairman. There's no reason for him to be Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Secretary Mayorkas. Uh, your open border policies have granted parole to a host of illegal aliens from regions in the Middle East and West Africa that are known for hotbeds for terrorism. Clearly, this administration's policies have emboldened countries.